that you could do this. Huh? He says that finances are easy. Huh, Mooney? <laughs> hey guys, what's up? It's Laura Ventura, founder and owner of Pause and All. And today I'm doing a very requested video on financing, not financing, but finances. And the breakdown that I used to figure out this mobile grooming world and how I needed to start and how much money I need and how much I need to charge people and all that good stuff. So I made it really easy for you guys. Before I begin, I do want to tell you these are all hypothetical numbers. So feel free to plug in your own expenses to see how much you need to charge a dog. Okay. So I broke it down into two sections, business expenses and personal expenses. Before you begin a business, you are going to sit down with yourself and you're going to list out all of your personal expenses and you are going to cut down in however way you can. All right. And on top of that, my suggestion to you is to save as much as you can before starting a business to avoid getting yourself into debt. All right. So let's start with the business expenses first. The van loan, I put it to $1,200. You got to make sure of two things. You get a good APR and try to put as much money down as you can to make this as low as possible. All right. Your storage is next. I don't have an apartment and a house that I could store my van. So I do need storage and I pay uh, roughly about $80 a month. Car insurance, $120. Hartford insurance, this is your liability insurance to make sure that you are covered if anything happens to a pet under your care, $46 a month. Booking app, I use Mogo. I have um, the premium one. You might want to start with the basic, but the premium is $89 a month. For gas, $250. Now gas is probably going to be your second biggest expense as a, a mobile groomer, and this is why you have to play it smart. If you are going to cover a wide range of areas, just be sure that you have designated days for every area so you're not driving around um, and wasting gas and wasting your energy, okay? Tolls, I have tolls in Orlando, Florida. That's $80 a month. Water, I pay my mother $100 a month. Salary, I said I roughly pay myself about $3,000 a month. Savings, take this seriously um anything could go wrong your van can mess up mechanically your generator could go out your inverter system needs new batteries a hurricane hits florida or wherever you are you're gonna need to cover yourself on a rainy day so save at least 100 to 200 save as much as you can but save at least 200 dollars a month taxes uh you gotta pay the irs um at the beginning of the year so you have to be sure that you're putting away taxes. Now you could do this daily or you could do this weekly or you could do this bi-weekly or you could do this monthly. I do it weekly. Every day I spend about 15 to 20 minutes with my cash flow and I just kind of project how much I'm going to have to put um, away at the end of the week and I just do so. I have a separate account that is labeled taxes in my business account. So all I have to do is transfer over that money. So that money is sitting there and ready when Uncle Sam comes knocking on my door. All right, materials for your business. Um, this is gonna vary. This is gonna vary because are you going to give every client a bandana, a bow? Um, how much shampoo are you gonna use? So I did an allowance of $100 a month for that, okay? That adds up to $5,265. Don't be scared yet though, okay? So these are your expenses for your business, which is completely separate. You heard that? Completely separate from your personal, okay? Don't mix the two. You have to have a business checking account and savings account and a personal business, uh, personal checking and savings account, okay? Do not separate, the, do not mingle the two together. And don't use your business debit card or credit card for your personal expenses because it's going to be a disaster at taxes okay so personal expenses rent 
a thousand dollars a month car payment two hundred and fifty dollars insurance two hundred and ten credit card two hundred dollars gas a hundred dollars a month food two hundred dollars cell phone 120 retirement retirement guys now that you're an entrepreneur and you're working for yourself there's not a company that's going to say hey you want to enroll in our 401k no you got to do that yourself so if you are planning to save for retirement what i highly suggest you do now especially if you are young okay because there is such thing called compound interest <laughs> um make it automatic insurance this is health insurance i said 250 okay that's 2430 so you add the 5265 to 2430 and you get 7695 dollars this is how much you need to make a month to make it to break even all right also keep in mind I'm saying that I'm paying myself $3,000, but my expenses are only $243. So whatever you do with that rest of the money, that could be your play money. You could add it to your savings. You could do whatever you want. That could be your little, you know, your little side thing. But this is how much money you need a month to just break even. So this is the formula that I want to show you guys. If you are working five days a week, that equals to two, 22 days a month, roughly, okay? Now, say you just wanna groom four dogs a day. That equals to 88 dogs a month, all right? When you first start, you're probably gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna work seven days a week and I'm gonna do eight, day, eight dogs a day. That's only gonna last about two, three months until you're gonna be pulling out your hair and you're gonna be crying in the corner, all right? So try to do this formula to see how many days you need to work, how many dogs, and try not to go overboard with it because self-care self is real. You have, like grooming, mobile grooming is very physical and it's very mental and you need days to rest. So that is why I'm saying five days a week grooming four dogs a day. All right, that equals to 88 dogs a month. So we're gonna take this number, 7,695, and we're gonna divide it into the 88 dogs. And that's gonna give us $87.44. I rounded that up, okay, to $88. So $88, that is the least amount of money that I have to be charging to go to somebody's house and groom a small dog for them. Okay, keep in mind that if you are doing cats, if you are doing medium sized dogs, if you are doing de shedding treatment, if you are upgrading your packages, and if you are doing large breeds, you will charge more than this. Okay, which could put this number down the 88 dogs a, um, a month, right? So, so that's also taking into account that you don't have to do that many dogs if your prices are high because of the work that you're doing. So be sure that your prices reflect the time, the energy, and the value that you're giving to the client. And you should be bringing in this and more. Okay, also take into account, I did not calculate for you guys the 20% of income. The 20% that you have to take off of $7,695, right? So keep that in mind, you're gonna have to pay taxes, but also keep in mind that if you are putting away 20% of your monthly income in a separate account, you're gonna have expenses for your business. So when taxes come in, when, ta when, it's, when it's time for you to pay taxes, you're probably not gonna owe the whole amount that you put in. I hope this is very self-explanatory. I hope that you guys use this formula. It's really, really easy. Do not worry about what the corner store on the corner is charging 
um, a small dog. Do not worry about what the other mobile groomer is charging a small dog. Do not worry about what your friend thinks you should charge for a small dog. You need to do your numbers first and understand that this number is going to be different for everybody because they don't have the same expenses as you. Based on the scenario we just covered, I just wanna go through and highlight a few areas and give you guys a few words of advice that I wish I kind of followed before and that I'm following now or I've always followed and it's really worked well for me. So just listen up and um, think about it. Let it marinate in your brain, all right? Before you start this craziness. It's not crazy, it's, it's actually really simple, very doable, but I'm just, you know, anyway. Okay, number one, save as much as you can before starting your business. Do not get yourself into crazy amount of debt. Please don't do it, okay? Because it's just gonna make things just a little harder um, and you're gonna have to be worried about paying off a credit card or paying off a big bill and trying to start up your business. Just save up first. If you need to put more money down on your van to lower those payments, do it. If you need to pay off other business expenses like creating your website, business cards, all marketing materials that could be very expensive, do that, okay? So save before starting a business. Try to do, try to save, I would say about a good 15,000. 10 to 15,000, very doable, okay? Second advice is get a good APR on your van. Make sure you get a good APR on your, on your van. And if you could double your payments in a year, in that, in that first year, do it. So you could get rid of that van payment because the van is going to be your most costly expense a month. All right, don't mess around your first year. That's the third, my third word of advice. Don't mess around your first year with your money. Keep track of your money, keep track of your expenses, pay off as much debt as you can, save up for your taxes. Fourth piece of advice is spend 10 to 15 minutes a day with your money. Grooming is, it's a lot of cash flow. It's a lot of fast money. And if you don't have that discipline, you're not gonna know where your money's going. You have to tell your money where to go. All right, so make sure that you do that and make sure that you also have two separate accounts, one for your business and one for your personal life and don't mix them at all. Get QuickBooks. QuickBooks is I think about $25 a month around there and it's just gonna make life easier. You could organize everything that's coming in and out of your business account and when taxes come, it's so easy because everything is just organized, labeled. You're going to see how much you spent on what and you don't have to go through your bank accounts figuring all that out. It's all in there. You just have to take the time to learn QuickBooks and organize it. All right, for the fifth or uh, sixth word of, word of advice? Yeah, I'm on the sixth, okay. Make savings automatic. It's not a joke, make it automatic. Because if you're going to say, hey, yeah, I'm gonna save $100 a month, I'm gonna save $150 a month, no, I'm gonna save 200, I'm just gonna put it away, I'll remember, you're not gonna remember. And even if you do remember, you're not gonna do it. So make it like a bill, that you just have it automatic, you don't have to think about it, you just, it goes out of your account and whoop, it's just not there anymore, and it's in another account. And try not to touch that money, it's probably gonna be visible to you because you're probably having transfer it to like an account, another savings account right under your, your business checking, but try not to touch that money because, you know, things could hit the fan and it could get weird sometimes. So at least you'll have that there. But anyway, I, I hope this was of service to you. And if you guys have any questions, again, um, comment on my video, ask me, I will reply. And if this was of any assistance to you or of any help to you or of anybody that you know, please share it, please like, please subscribe. I will be making more videos to make 
your business ventures a little bit more clear when it comes to this mobile grooming world. All right, so until next time, thank you guys. Bye. Hey guys, what's up? It's Laura Ventura, uh, found... What? What am I saying? <laughs>